Hi, everyone. It's your favorite real estate broker, Courtney King. I'm back with another episode. Today actually marks episode 60 of this podcast. And before I actually started recording, um, I re-recorded the trailer for this podcast because I realized the trailer is still stuck on when I first dropped the book. And so I decided to go ahead and record a new trailer, peep the new podcast graphic, uh, switching it up a little bit as the podcast evolves. Um, and I'm just so excited. I actually scrolled through the old episodes. And if you guys remember, I dropped my book January 1st, 2020. Was it 2020? Yeah, I think it was. January 1st, 2020. And all year long in 2020, I did a bunch of episodes really focused on the book and really focused on real estate investing. Um, and investing is still near and dear to my heart. Um, and also, like, life has changed. So my personal focus hasn't been as much on real estate investing, um, although, you know, I dropped some nuggets here and there in the podcast. Um, and so then I was looking at uh, where the podcast ended going, ended up next. And that's when I really basically made my uh, reintroduction um, in 2023. So it was like a two year, almost three year long hiatus. Um, and then I came back last year. And so I was just like scrolling through each of the episodes. I think the number one episode um, that most people enjoyed was uh, what does real estate investing look like in 2021? Um, and so uh, just had a really good time scrolling through the episodes because life changes, right? And with that, we are in season five now. Um, and last Tuesday, when I dropped a new episode, I was still pondering like, okay, Lord, where is this podcast going to go? And I think I figured out where I want us to go in this season. Okay. Episode 60 is the kickoff of a series that I'm going to call the heart of a broker. Okay. And what that means is I want to give you a little bit of a glimpse of my day to day and where my heart is as a real estate broker. Now y'all know, I talk a lot about Texas because I am a designated broker in the state of Texas. I'm also a qualifying broker in the state of New Mexico. And who knows, this year I'll probably get licensed in additional states. And while the podcast has been mostly focused on like real estate agents in particular, I want to dive into the heart of a broker. I am actually writing my next book. Um, and I'm not going to share too many details yet because it's still in the works. Um, but I thought let's break down a real estate broker and particularly me and my heart um, in hopes that if there are other brokers that are listening to this podcast, or let's say you're an agent that is shopping around for different brokers, or you're an agent that wants to become a broker, this episode, this series is really for you, okay? So the heart of a broker, I want to back it all the way up first, okay? Because there are still people in 2024, that's when I'm recording this, that don't truly understand the nature of um, a real estate broker and like the role, if you will. So I want to start there first um, and then kind of preview what's to come in this season. So let's talk a little about what a real estate broker is. Now, in some states, all real estate, uh, excuse me, all real estate agents are considered brokers. Okay. So for example, in New Mexico, everybody's considered a broker. Okay. But that may not mean like they are the broker in charge, if you will. Okay. So a real estate broker, uh, in New Mexico, it's a quality qualifying broker in Texas, it's a designated broker or a broker. If there's, uh, if, if a broker doesn't have like a corporation or anything like that, um, this person is like the supervising authority 
over the agents that this person sponsors or the corporation sponsors. Okay. So, um, I'll give you an example. I don't own King Realty and Management anymore. I shut it down, as you guys know, in early 2021. So King Realty and Management was the corporate broker. Now, every corporation has to have an individual that's a licensed broker that basically sponsors the corporation. Okay. So I was the designated broker of King Realty and Management Incorporated. Okay. That was my role. Okay. Um, when I had my own brokerage. And so under me were the agents that I sponsored. Okay. These are your everyday real estate agents that are helping buyers and sellers and investors out there. So that's kind of the structure of a broker. Now, when somebody first get, gets licensed, um, uh, they typically have to go come under a sponsoring broker. Okay. So, um, that sponsoring broker, whether it be an entity or a person like myself, that person is going to ultimately be kind of the supervisor or authority over that sponsored salesperson or agent. Okay. I'm using agent and salesperson um, interchangeably. Okay. So that kind of breaks down the structure in a very simplistic uh, nutshell. Now, there are brokers that are tied, even though they're a broker, right? They're tied to other brokers. They call those associated brokers or associate brokers. So, for example, um, let's say I'm going to use King Realty as an example. Let's say King Realty is the broker. I'm the designated broker. Again, we know this is just for an example sake because I closed down King Realty. Let's just be clear. So let's say there is another broker that wants to work under King Realty, then essentially that broker would be an associate broker. They wouldn't be a sponsored agent, but they would be associated with the brokerage. Okay. That breaks it down in a nutshell. Let's say you are a licensed real estate agent and you are looking for a broker to hang your license is what we call it. Um, this series is for you because not all brokers are the same. Not all brokerages are the same. And I really want to dive deep into the heart of being a real estate broker in hopes that if you're shopping around to different brokerages, this is going to spark different thoughts and questions. So you make sure that you select the, the brokerage or the individual broker that's going to be the best fit. Okay. Okay. Now, I'll give you a little bit of my background experience, okay, because I've been a broker for many, many years. Um, before that, I was an agent, and I actually, when I first got licensed, um, was sponsored by a, a, a gentleman who had his own brokerage, okay? And I came under that brokerage, and essentially how that works out is you pay a fee to join a brokerage generally, especially if it's a tra traditional brokerage. You pay a fee, um, then you're sponsored by that broker, and then typically that broker is has some sort of commission split with you, Okay. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, like commission split, why, right? Essentially, people like me, real estate brokers that sponsor agents, uh, typically have additional liability because we're now responsible for all of the um, activity that you perform as a licensed real estate agent, okay? So that's typically why there is some sort of commission split because um, as the broker, I'm taking on additional liability. OK, the other reason for di different commission splits is that typically the broker is involved with lead generation, basically having systems in place to generate customers to give to its agents. OK, sometimes they're called customers, sometimes they're called leads. Um, and then the agents typically work with those leads to close deals, right, to help them buy or sell their home. OK. And then once it's a closed transaction, then basically the broker and the agent are getting paid, okay? Generally, specifically for the state of Texas, only um, brokerages and licensed real estate agents can be paid in a transaction. And how they're paid really depends on 
how the broker sets it up. You know, sometimes the agents will be paid directly from the title company and it'll be split like on the final settlement statement. Uh, other times the brokers will, the broker, excuse me, will collect the full commission and then pay their agent. It just really kind of depends on the structure of, you know, whatever the agreement is between that broker and that agent. Okay. I know that was a lot and I didn't want to dive into like real estate broker speak and set up and all of that good stuff until we tackled that piece. So when I think of a real estate broker, I think of how I actually operate, how I want to be as a broker, right? I think of how can I be the most supportive um, and empowering real estate broker to my agents. Now, not all brokers are like that, right? There are quite a few brokers that are really hands off. Um, they collect their revenue each month, whether they, they're charging annual or monthly fees to the agents that they sponsor in addition to the commissions. Um, uh, whether they provide lead generation and just everything is up to the agent. Like, in my experience, a lot of brokers are hands off and that's no like disrespect to them. That's just how they operate. Right. And every broker structures a little bit different. So if you are a real estate agent, that is very much a self starter, um, where you don't need that much additional support, or maybe you don't want that much uh, additional support. Maybe that's kind of the broker for you. Uh, but when I talk about my heart as a real estate broker, um, I think about every single possible way that I can connect with my agents, that I can teach them everything that I've learned that has helped me become successful in this business. Um, I think about how uh, I can train them effectively and efficiently. I think about a lot of the topics that are relevant to their everyday life. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in the upcoming episodes in this series. Uh, I think I, I, I also think about compliance. A big component of being a real estate broker is the compliance piece because we have state and local laws and federal laws that we actually have to comply with. And then we also have to make sure that our agents comply with those laws as well. Um, I think systems for generating leads for agents, um, that is actually the most crucial thing if you are going to operate as a broker. And I think one of the most important things to consider if you are an agent trying to figure out where you want to be planted. Okay, what brokers you want to uh, connect with. And then last but not least, I think about like the everyday connection with my agents. That's really important to me. I had already told you about like those hands off brokers. Well, there's hands on brokers like myself where I like to be engaged. I like to be plugged into my team. Uh, it's crucial because um, I... I think a lot about, um, this is actually how I operate in everyday life, but like with my business, right? Um, if my agents aren't winning, I'm not winning as the broker. Okay. Let's say in my friendships, right? If my friends aren't winning, I might not be winning. So how can I add value to my friends so that they are winning and I'm winning as well? Like, I think in my personal and professional opinion, some of the best real estate brokers are those that are really focused on encouraging and empowering their teams to level up and to do better. Um, I don't know why else be in this business, right? Why else sponsor agents unless that's going to be your heart? So we're going to talk a lot about that in this season. And specifically, as we move forward in this season and these upcoming episodes, I want to break down each of the systems, and right now I have listed four of them, um, it may evolve into more because I've been doing this so long that sometimes you like just do everything out of habit. And so I'm like physically writing down every single component of my career, my profession as a real estate broker. But the four main systems that I came up with off the top of my head that we're going to dive deep into in each of these episodes are... Um, Let's start with licensing and compliance, okay? And I'm not 
I'm not talking about them in the order of these episodes that are coming up, but just more thinking through like the role of a real estate broker. Uh, we're going to talk about systems for licensing and compliance and the heart of a broker when it comes to licensing and compliance. Okay. Um, thinking about systems for training. Oh gosh. Training is so important because like, even if you're not a real estate agent, think about the experiences that you've had buying and selling, or maybe you haven't bought and sell, sold a home yet. Think about those experiences that you've had, whether it be in engaging or interacting with real estate professionals or agents at like open houses, online, social media, like what are they talking about? How do they present themselves, right? Do they know what they're talking about? Training is a huge component and is actually one of the things that I love most about being a real estate broker is the training component. We're going to dive deeper into that. Um, also, systems for lead generation. This is something that I've talked a little bit about um, in the podcast. Now, one of the reasons why I shut my brokerage down and joined another brokerage as the designated broker is because lead generation is tricky and it is very expensive. Okay. doesn't have to be, but um, if you're really trying to make moves and close a large number of deals um, in your particular area, lead generation can make or break your career as a real estate agent or a broker. Okay. So we're going to talk about systems for that. Um, and then last but not least, systems for engaging with your team. Okay. Engaging with your team of agents. Maybe you have coordinators. Um, that is also really crucial. The end of the day, when I operate as a real estate broker, I think, okay, what's going to help me help my team put their best foot forward, right? Um, what's going to help my team close more deals? Uh, what's going to help them feel good and show up well? I'll give you a quick example, okay? Um I, and I'm really big on being intentional. I love being intentional, you guys. That was my word for 2023. Um, and I'm still carrying it forward in 2024. Um, but I had an agent uh, that I spoke to in the last week. And this agent was asking me a really simple question. And it had to do with negotiating repairs and some challenges that he was experiencing on the other side of the deal. He represented the buyer. The other agent was giving him a few challenge, challenges, excuse me, and I could hear it in his voice. And when I think about the heart of a broker, it's like, you know your people. You know your people. And if you are a broker right now listening and you don't like really know your people, meaning agents and coordinators and maybe supervisors, uh, managers, right? And everything in between, if you don't really know them, my challenge for you today and in this series is really take your time to be intentional about getting to know them. I heard it as soon as, uh, as soon as I, he picked up the phone and I said, Hey, how are you doing? He's like, you know what? Not well. Right. And in that moment, he didn't want to go deeper. And I respected that. Right. We all have some days where we're not well. Um, and it's understandable. That's life. That's, that's a whole other series about overcoming. Okay. We'll get to it. I promise. Okay. Um, he said not well. And so we talked a little bit about his actual issue with the other agent. Okay. And I had to remind him, Hey, don't let this guy pull you down. Right. The other agent, in my opinion, was actually being a little bit petty, but I had to remind my agent that we don't know what that other agent is going through on the other side. So it may have come across and I may have perceived it as petty, but maybe that guy is overcoming some sort of challenge of, in and of itself. And, and maybe it has nothing to do with the agent, but, or excuse me, with the transaction, but maybe he's actually like going through something and just taking it out on these negotiations. It happens, right? Uh, but if we're going to be intentional, we don't have to let um, anybody that we're engaging with pull us to a place that we don't want to go, right? If somebody's trying to pull us to a pet, a place of petty, like if you don't want to go and be petty, don't, right? 
does it require some like intentional self-control? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy, but I'm saying that you don't have to go to a place emotionally or with your thoughts that you don't want to be. And so I told that agent this in this particular conversation. Um, and then he said, you know what? Thank you so much, Courtney. Thank you for helping me through it. Um, I gave him some points on how to move forward and it was all good. And when I, I, taking it back to knowing your people, I put a reminder on my calendar for the following day to check in on him because I knew there was more going on. Maybe he didn't want to share it and it's okay. He doesn't have to share it with me. But when I think about my heart as a real estate broker, making sure I check in on my people is so important. It's so important. So um, that's the heart of a real estate broker. I'm excited about where this series is going to go. I haven't decided which system, which part of the heart of a real estate broker we're going to go to next, but stay tuned because we're going to talk about all of the systems that I um, laid out earlier today and, uh, and more. Um, if you cannot tell, I love what I do for a living. And I love coming to you every single week talking about kind of my reality and hopefully giving you guys nuggets to help you in your journey, whether it's in real estate or just life in general. So make sure you tune in to another episode of Millennial vs. Machine. I will be back next Tuesday for another episode. So take care. Thanks for joining us. Bye.